Okay, folks, welcome to the computational chemistry class. Uh, thank you for your patience and dedication to go over uh, different forms of rescheduling. So, um, I, I think we are done with uh, setting up times and uh, we may uh, adjust place a little bit. So, regarding times, uh, there are I know two undergraduate students who are interested to take the class, but uh, they have overlapped. They may arrive maybe 6.15. And uh, I want to talk to them. Maybe we will keep things in books for six, but everyone will arrive a little later. <laughs> because starting really later, like at seven, it is too much. Then we will uh, take time from, 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 uh, from the soup. So what? What is the class about? What are, are, are the goals? Well, uh, most of you are already involved in some uh, research some uh, theoretical and computational, some are involved in experimental, and uh, you may broaden your horizons and add uh, a paragraph or page or a chapter into your thesis or, or a paper uh, made by another uh, method. So we will make this course uh, project-based, at least the grading project-based. And here is uh, an example of um, what is uh, what is done by students of the similar course uh, last year? Uh, so you see some mini projects uh, that take about six, eight pages of written description, and uh, it is application of the methods practiced in uh, there, there will be lectures and, and lab, methods practiced in the lab for some research project. So uh, if you you can take it with you and take it as an example. If you if you can do something like this right now, you don't need to come to the meetings. <laughs> and uh, those we have in abundance, you're welcome to take them at home. There are some of the similar works from previous uh, more years uh, in the past, but I, I have limited supply. Please uh, do not uh, <laughs> take them with you. Um, what else? Oh. So please take one of the uh, green. green sheet. I can show you. Please take one green, th green th thing. So you are familiar with this uh, style. By the end of semester, everyone writes a little chapter or brief report. to show a wave uh, before, before, because of several reflections. Okay. I'll bring, next time I may bring, here are the books that may help you to feel uh, comfortable in the course, but there are no required books. Uh, there, um, there are some manuals, there are some books, but um, we will do a special path. So we are, we are not going to meticulously go over all the chapters of, of standard books. We are not going to go over just uh, technician manual for operating software. We will make a healthy blend of the cover. Yes, please? Out of the three, what is your favorite text? Neither one. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of suspected. I have the green one. 
Um, well, this one is is not computational chemistry. It's, it's uh, fun, is it? yeah, quantum physical chemistry, but it has a really nice overview of uh, most of things that we do here, and uh, it is short since it is not not main um, scope of the of the book. It overviews everything we do in class in maybe like half page per each lecture or even shorter. So it's a good summary. So here's the list of uh, subjects. Um, we may adjust them as uh, as we go, but approximately we, we will follow them. So um, and I also owe you to distribute to distribute uh, syllabus, but you will have the same thing. So there will be uh, four chapters, and um, approximately at the end of each chapter there will be. Lecture when uh, I will sit and relax and you will present, splitting lecture time on uh, amount of participants of the class. So the first chapter we will do is uh, uh, general background of what is molecule, practical skills of building molecules because we, without building a model you cannot characterize it. You know, like in uh, wet chemistry there is a synthesis and characterization. Uh, by analogy, this one will be synthesis, and this three will be characterization. Um, on the during the first chapter, we will also look uh, on the background for so-called molecular dynamics force field, uh, so-called optimization of geometry, dealing with positions of atoms. While for the rest of the chapters, we will look on electronic structure. So, and there are people who deal with electronic structure methods for the, for the whole life. We, can, we do not have so much time. We will focus on, on uh, very selective topics, starting from, probably from the simplest and going a little bit up. So the simplest uh, uh, working uh, electronic structure theory is so-called so -called Hartley Fox theory, which is not helpful for any practical Calculations, but it is really good to set up uh, a mind. Just uh, it is a um, demonstration example how electronic structure theories are working and how they are programmed into algorithms and, and how they can generate typical styles of output like energies, orbitals. Um, during the first two chapters, uh, we will cover. Um, Software building models like Avogadro and Gaussian through Gauss Hue. And we will do some basic electronic structure and present it at the end of the uh, second chapter. Then, for the um, second two chapters, we will go into. Um, so, this is so called density functional theory, which is a match uh, of uh, numerical cost and precision. It's not super precise. But it is uh, very affordable to run by anyone, by every computer, at least for small molecules. And uh, uh, majority of publications are done with this workhorse. So we will switch from uh, WASP so from Gaussian software to WASP software, and uh, by the end of the second chapter, we will split practical skills between participants, and you will uh, teach each other. Like one person will present one subject, another, another one, going over what we did in, in the labs. And for the um, last part, we will go over background for describing excited states, which needs uh, special theories. And uh, we will focus on the uh, research projects in, in parallel with this theory. So it's, uh, some of you all are already exposed to some practical computations, and neither one of the words that I pronounced is new. Like Hartley Fock, DFT, and TDDFT is something that you're familiar with. Some of you are familiar with. I, I do not promise, but I do have intentions to put links to recordings at the end of each chapter so that uh, if by some reason you are missing. Um, 
Okay, so basically it, it is a syllabus, what uh, uh, you will do. So during the first uh, chapter we will have labs and uh, some of you are already really experienced Linux guru. Some of you are not yet. So we will um, uh, practice uh, a way to communicate with modern computational systems which are not uh, Microsoft uh, Windows nor Mac OS. It's a different uh, environment, uh, so-called Linux. And uh, there are ways to launch uh, massive jobs on massive computers, so you'll get some basic basic I, I know that some of you are already experienced in this, but then you can assist others in the class. Uh, building building mo um, models, optimizing. If you have time, we, we can also include into the uh, first chapters the uh, transition states, search and normal modes, but it will be like uh, icing on a cake if time allows. Um, then there will be a um, minimal standard uh, set of skills for plotting density of states and orbitals that is really simple, but uh, it is a good complement to any research work that, uh, that you are doing, no matter which, uh, which area. And uh, then there will be analysis of uh, charge transfer state, uh, molecular dynamics uh, at ab initial level, which allows for bond breaking information and chemical reactions. And uh, um, the following subject is uh, not the biggest one in science, but I give it uh, biggest uh, value, creating movies, creating scientific animations of, of, of molecular dynamics, which is uh, really helpful in analyzing what, what is going on uh, in the uh, real world when everything, except very, very few, experience everything happens at elevated temperature when uh, ions are not sitting at uh, specific places, right? They depart from the group And um, again, it's another icing on the cake. Maybe we will go through relaxation dynamics and lifetime of oxidations, which are advanced topics, and uh, I do not guarantee that we will have time, but maybe, and some of you may, may need it. So some of you are interested in making connection between structure and properties, right? And there are a set of properties like band gap energy, color, UV spectrum, uh, lifetimes, how soon it will emit or relax, ability to form charge transfer, ability for, for like activation energy for specific reaction. So we'll try to cover, cover these aspects. And if uh, this uh, chemical language is a little of a little bird's language, we will cover the basics. Uh, at the beginning of, of each class. So, huh? To my best understanding, because I do not have chemistry background. Oh. All my degrees are in physics, so... <laughs> 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 um, there is a guarantee that we will not go too far into, into chemistry. Uh, well, probably we, we will not practice too much of teamwork because uh, the class is not overpopulated. If it will be more than 10 people, we, we would split everyone in groups of two uh, to give pre uh, presentations not not very short, but right now we have availability for giving individual presentations and uh, writing individual chapters. Technical writing, you, you saw it, peer reviewing, uh, it means before we will uh, make this uh, <coughs> skill, um, um, before we will publish these booklets, the chapters will go to you guys as to reviewers and you will have chance to say how much you like writing of your peers or opposite <laughs> and uh, presentations and, and then the movies that scientific animations will be published on youtube and then you will collect hits <laughs> and likes <laughs> subscribers um one of the uh, persons who took this class from me the first time I taught it overcame me in number of uh, views, likes and hits. Um, he Well, for scientific animations you can get millions, right? But he got 5,000 for one of, you, of the scientific animations he did in, in the class. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, he's so efficient that I decided to keep him with me for a longer time, and he's now for second one. <laughs> so you, you cannot live so efficient people. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's fill this. Um, let's fill this um, thing by coming. Well, I'll try to verbalize it, and then pr probably everyone will come and uh, leave a little signature here. So, um, if you are taking notes, you might try to draw these boxes and try to fill them. So, here we are trying to uh, make flow chart of everything that is going on in this course, in the computation of chemistry area, uh, before getting into depth. Of, of, the, of the skills and procedures. So, at the beginning, we are. Maybe I, I will do this time for asking for help if I really need it. Maybe we will do it. Um, together next time. So, initially, one starts with atomic models. At the end, one is getting properties. So, structure to property relations. So, some of you are from the research group dealing with cheminformatics and Structure to property relation or quantitative structure to property relation is your favorite abbreviation. Thank you, sir. Uh, we are not making focus on how to analyze these relations. We are uh, making focus on how to get at least a few data points for these uh, relations. So the models are things like that, right? Which uh, you just uh, record each model as a set of Cartesian coordinates or so called Z matrix in, uh, in the computer file. Properties will be like gap, color, as we list. So, what connects structure to property? Any ideas? Hamiltonian? Not bad. But uh, let's look on this as users, not, not as like big theorists, but <laughs> like, like when we come to the, when we shop for something, we, don't, we are not interested in a structure. What stays, what connects, what con converts structure into problem? You have to optimize. You're still oh. too, too smart, <laughs> too, too, too professional. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's, let's be really okay. simple. Okay. Since it is computational chemistry, there should be a computer. Yes. Good. So, what is com uh, computer? What are, like, philosophically? Two main components. Do not take tell display and keyboard. A, a little more philosophical. <laughs> <laughs> what is a computer? It does work. Uh, uh, well, it's, it's, it's a way, like, to, to have a discussion. Uh, yeah. But uh, it uh, um, consumes electricity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what computer is um, composed of philosophically? Information. Right. Good, good. Very good. What, what else? Processing. Processing? Any, any other? Converting. Converting what into what? One piece of information to another. Information in the data. Good. Huh? Information in the data or data into information. <laughs> yes. So um, ex you're doing excellent, but uh, right now we are looking on uh, on the two arrows that, which come in and out. You have some information in and some information out, but you see there are some blocks, two blocks. So if uh, if it's Take a screwdriver and start to unscrew computer, what will you see? CPU. Like, yeah, motherboard, CPU, hard drive or solid state drive. 
which are, what is a single word for all of this? Hardware? Yes, hardware. But uh, is it sufficient to have best possible motherboard, CPU, uh, what else is needed? Software. Yes, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you it would be an easy course. <laughs> okay, now, uh, which software is needed for computational chemistry? Calcium. Well, computational yeah. chemistry yeah. software, right? <laughs> yeah, computational. It's good. So, um, how do we, uh, how do we, Decide which uh, software we need for uh, for this computational chemistry stuff. Who writes the software for us, or how do we write the software if you really want to do? What do we need for, for to do the software? Theory. Perfect. Now uh, you are mind reader. You 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 got my style of thinking. Theory. And one can put like uh, Hamiltonian that you mentioned at first, H psi equals A psi, right? So in some sense, here is our computational chemistry. Theory, software, on some hardware, you start with uh, structures, we, we get properties. And uh, on the uh, labs, we will cover bigger part, and perhaps take smaller uh, fraction of time. And with the lectures, which take a little longer time, we will cover theories behind uh, the software. OK? Yeah, it was too easy task to invite anyone to write it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll wait until there will be something more complicated and uh, ask you to help. So computer, software, hardware, models, properties or observables and the theory. Right. One can add another um, uh, box into this flow chart, comparison to experiment, scientific communications, getting appreciation from colleagues. Right. I don't know what I'm going to tell you. Probably you already have a strategy which just gets through theories, look for software that implements them. But um, let's discuss. Well, we are going to describe molecules or maybe very big molecules, which are like solids. By the way, this is a uh, uh, silicon nano rod that Nathan is, is modeling with uh, uh, P doping and N doping. So it's your model. <laughs> There's leads on mine too. Huh? There's uh, leads on mine too, though. Yes, you explained how to attach them during the course. So we are dealing with um, small or big molecules, right? So what is a molecule? Combination of atoms. What is atom? Well, that far, okay. <laughs> oh, we're determining uh, it's an element relative to like what the energy it provides, isn't it? Dealing with like, and you can go deeper and say it's dealing with what string theory in a way, because obviously once you go, is it what you what you've, atom, what you've got in your middle school, or high school? Well, a, a little simpler. Basic unit. Huh? Basic unit of a compound. What atom is composed of? Electrons, neutrons. Electrons and nuclei. We don't need to get, get deeper. Okay. So there are nuclei which are either, which have different mass and charge, and we do have uh, electrons, which always have the same charge and mass. But there is different number of electrons, right? Mm -hmm. Probably that's the main message for today's meeting. 
I don't know if I, if, if I can get into more details. Okay, collection of, uh, yeah, I was supposed to draw it, but I have it uh, drawn from previous years. Collection of uh, electrons and nucleus, and um, if we are thinking at a level of freshman chemistry, we just count charge, mass, bonds, characterize which type of uh, uh, chemical is it? Is it like oxidizer or re uh, reducing agent? Is it organic or inorganic? But if we start thinking as a physicist, so you have collection of electrons and nuclei, and you want to bring some characterization of this system of uh, um, nucleus and electrons. Charge. If you want to... Hmm? Charge spheres. Good. But uh, the idea that you, we want to uh, quantify everything. Right? So, um, how do we quantify? Like if you have something, benzene molecule, six carbons, six uh, hydrogens, and you want to quantify the structure before getting properties. What do we need? What if we want to draw a structure like this in a computer? We're not going to paint or we're not going to make lines in the PowerPoint. Bonds. Huh? The bonds. Bonds, but what bonds can be shorter or longer? Coordinates of each of the atoms? E coordinates of the atoms? Yes, we need coordinates. Uh, simplest way is Cartesian coordinates. Sometimes there are crazy systems when there is a set of uh, interatomic bonds. So we need a uh, list of all nuclei, mass, charge, and three Cartesian projections. You don't have enough fingers. <laughs> three projections. Um, if I haven't taken quantum theory for myself, I may also set up three Cartesian coordinates for electrons. Which is, uh, it is uh, philosophically not bad, but uh, later on through quantum theory, you know that it is, doesn't have much sense because electrons are smeared out everywhere. But uh, philosophically, if we have like, uh, benzene is too complicated, I'm tired of it. H2 molecule. We have two protons and two electrons. And we need uh, Cartesian projections for each of these four particles, right? Let's do it. So if you are uh, taking notes, uh, please try to do it. And if you are, uh, if you are, If you are not taking notes, then maybe you help me here. So we are trying to answer the question, what is the molecule? So our goal is to quantify, to convert from structure to, to properties. And we agree the molecule is a collection of nu uh, positive nucleus and negative electrons. If you want to set up Cartesian coordinates for each of the particles, what do we need? Like if we are taking geometry in a high school. You need the x, y, and z coordinate. Which starts from? The origin. Origin. So we need to select an origin, right? Sometimes we can uh, uh, fit origin to center of mass or to one of the atoms, or we can take it ar arbitrarily. But we need to start from, from the origin. Okay, um, so this system has ways to, to have color coding. So let's um, put blue electrons, electron number one, electron number two, and red. 
this is a really nice uh, task to ask someone to help, but I like it so much that I prefer <laughs> to do it myself. And it is uh, easy enough. When there will be a hard task, I will give up and let, let you guys do it. So, and we have positive nuclei 1, nuclei 2. Okay. And this is our origin. So if we want to set up uh, to quantify, so this is a H2 molecule. Right? And um, we, are not, we are not yet determining exact answers. We just want to set up notations. Later on, we will feed these notations, these variables with some realistic values. But uh, f um, we need to set up a system of notations and uh, agree on that, because otherwise it will be no reason to, to, to go further. So uh, let me use lowercase vectors for electrons and uh, uppercase vectors for nuclei. R1, R2, right, for electrons. And for uh, nucleus, it will be R capital 1, R capital 2. Good. So each vector are three components, four vectors, 12 components. Right? So, to some extent, it's, it is a molecule of, uh, it is a model of hydrogen molecule. Good. I'm going to scroll back a couple of slides, because we need to, disc uh, to agree what are we going to do with Cartesian coordinates. Right now, suddenly, we need to remember that once upon a time we took quantum mechanics a little bit. If you, if you didn't, it's my task to make a little refresher. So the challenge and difficulty in connecting structure to property for molecules is that it is not just uh, point charges that have forces. The classical mechanics is not sufficient to predict properties of molecules. We need uh, quantum properties of electrons, which are moving so quick that they are distributed objects. Right? And there is a specific theory, so-called quantum mechanics, to describe that. Right? So who um, is very happy, exposed, and familiar with uh, things of quantum theory? Who is uh, who has never heard about it and, and uh, feel very uncomfortable. Who is so-so? Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll cover something, but um, the... Just giving a warning that I'm scrolling back in slides. So... I'm going to make oversimplified, not true quantum theory, not everything, but really, really minimal basics. So if we do have like, one electron, it is being attracted to negative electron, it's being attracted to positive ions, right? So it moves in a potential. When it is close, it is energetically more favorable. When it is far, it is energetically less favorable. In addition, electron can have velocity or momentum and kinetic energy. Okay. So if we are interested in energy of electron, we need to add together its potential energy and kinetic, right? On one hand. On another hand, we already we, we have heard it from the media. It's not a uh, novel discovery that electrons are described not by where they are at this point of time, but as a distribution. And for these distributions, we need an equation. 
that will give this dis distribution and energy of such distribution. So there are four, there are following components. So one needs uh, potential energy. One need, needs kinetic energy. It's called letter V, letter T, and then one combines them together. into total energy, which uh, is by agreement is denoted with letter H. Total, total energy. And we will go in, into details. I'm just uh, going through a very, very simple for you. So for electron, we have potential energy, which depends on position, kinetic energy, which depends on velocity, and add them together. And then, When all of us were in middle and high school, we had a little of physics, right? Because in previous class, uh, I had a person who never had physics at all. So uh, if we are thinking on a language of classical physics, right, the position and velocity are variables. You can assign a value for it which is not quite right for quantum particles, for electrons that are so small, so quick. Instead of variable that has a certain value, it is so-called, what's the right word? Um, Starts with the letter O. Oh, operator? Yes, operator. So I, I need to list several concepts and then merge them together. So. Uh, position and velocity are not uh, point values but operators on one hand. On the other hand, electrons are not like stuff that is placed somewhere, but distribution distributed everywhere in space. It's like a field, a function of three coordinates, or if it is more than one particle, more coordinates. Right? So there are OP vapors. OP vapors. And there are so-called wave functions. Wave functions. Which are x, y, and z. Functions of, of three co coordinates or um, vector. So there are very simple, I will show them in a minute, ways, there are simple expressions, how to express uh, kinetic and potential energy uh, operators. But main, I'm, now I'm trying to bring things together. The life goal of operators, their destiny, is to act on wave functions. So uh, operators always stand in front of wave functions and they change them. So operators are like taking derivative, most typical derivative. Derivative changes function. So position, momentum, potential energy, kinetic energy, Hamiltonian. All of them act on, on a wave function. And now the main part of the super simplified quantum theory. If we are able to formulate Hamiltonian operator in the right way, I'm not showing this explicitly how, but if we, if we are able to write differential operator for Hamiltonian, then we can write equation that Hamiltonian operator acts on the wave function, and then it generates wave function again with some energy. Here you put index i, i, i. I'm not having speech defect. I'm just repeating this i, i, i uh, several times. Which depends on position. So, what's your question? What's your question? So, Hamiltonian will be known in the 
wave function and energy will be unknown, but this <coughs> one height. Maybe this one. <laughs> so if we are able to formulate Hamiltonian, then we need someone who will solve this equation for us. If we are in the integrated quantum theory and we have only one electron, we can solve by ourselves for simplest cases, like right? particle in the box. Right? If it is truly multi-electron big systems, we need computers. But everything what we do, not everything, but substantial part, will be connected to solving of this equation. So first, formulating Hamiltonian, this letter H, and then, uh, so see, see it is one known and two unknowns, but it is possible to solve such equation. So this equation will have several solutions, but orbitals, the psi functions, will be shapes how electrons are distributed in space, and energies, what will be the energy of each electronic orbital. Okay? What is after the ham the the psi? Like I, I can't. Is that a um? It, it's my uh, absolutely perfect uh, calligraphic R. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry for. No, it's okay. <laughs> Are you sure? Are I, I, am I sure about what? Ah, yeah. uh, I see. Okay. And then that okay. equals H times psi as function of R yeah. equals e. Oh. e times psi as function of r. And uh, both psi and e do have index i. What because is because uh, this is very shorthand notation for equation in uh, partial derivatives. And equations in partial derivatives typically have more than one solution. So each solution is labeled by index i running over. One, two, three. So psi is unknown. It is unknown before we, s yes, yes. It is unknown that we need to find. OK. And in narrow sense, computational chemistry is a science of solving this equation for big molecules. It's, it's not absolutely correct. We, 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 there are some additions, but in, in narrow sense, what you're doing is uh, formulating atomic structures and finding this side wave functions. What's E and R on that equation? Where? You said E, or you said E, and then R. R is position, position oh. in space. E is energy. Do you permit me to go forward? Or do you want me to okay. mumble more about the previous one? You're not yet tired? Or you are always tired. <laughs> <laughs> we have to get used to it. <laughs> okay. So um, a little a little thing. Uh, if it is your first exposure to quantum theory, you may lean back and relax for a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell something not super complicated, but a little bit more advanced. If, if you miss it, you will not miss uh, You'll survive the course anyway. But what we have seen before this H psi equals E psi is time independent Schrodinger equation. Schrodinger is a famous guy who designed this equation. Time independent because there is no time there. Energy, position, Hamiltonian, everything is time independent. But in fact, in real life, in, in, in uh, real nature, everything is time dependent. And Schrodinger was not so silly to forget about it. It's just time independent is more simple and more important to try to solve at first. Hand. But uh, there is a little extension. And originally, Schrodinger equation means time dependent one. So here is the time dependent. You apply. Hamiltonian to a known psi function, and it gives you how psi function changes in time. So time derivative of psi equals h bar to psi. And from this time dependent, one can derive time independent. And if you do know, 
if you were so lucky that you have solved time independent Schrodinger equation on the previous slide, then you are rich. <laughs> you do have set of energies and you do have set of psi functions, right? So if you, it's a lot of information and we will computationally learn how to collect them. So if you do have set of psi functions and energies, one can construct time dependent wave function, which, because this um, electronic clouds may change in time. If someone kicks them, perturbs with light, or if molecules collide in chemical reactions, it is also inevitable. So psi times exponential with imaginary unit and energy and time, and then each wave function is multiplied by expansion coefficient. And then it will be wave function that will be like dancing this time. It's a just little note that uh, limitations. Time independent Schrodinger equation is not the whole story. You need uh, some time to, there is a way to include time dependence. Is there something after the T? Because it looks like it's covered up by the little pen. Uh, yes. <laughs> Guess what? Uh, um. I, I, I'm confident that at least one person in the class knows and can answer this question even if he woke up in the middle of the night. And I have a suspicion that few more people have, have guess. So let's discuss what is hidden under little pen. <laughs> X. Huh? No. X. Uh, good try. Other options? Constant, maybe? Which constant? Uh, A? No. Uh, you... X. <sighs> hmm. This symbol is already presented in. Oh, the, co the coefficient, the, that one, the blue one. No. No? H bar. Uh, what is H bar? <gasps> uh, the Planck's constant? Yes. Oh! You, you know what is Planck constant? Yes. Okay. So it comes up here and it comes up here in the denominator. Okay. So dimensionality of Planck constant is the same as angular momentum or as energy times time. And if you multiply energy times time and divide by Planck constant, which is not seen here, <laughs> then you have dimensional less power of exponential. And it will accumulate phase. Thank you, Gage. I'm proud of you. <laughs> so I remember something. Uh, <laughs> the, the blue stuff. Oh, this expansion coefficients. So is it like, are you, do you have like a parenthesis there? No, it's no, just a no, big no, C. No, no, no. Um, oh, okay. Last year, I was inviting volunteers from the class, um, and they did it in layers. First did the whole equation, and then I told like, hey, hey, you have forgotten the C. Isn't it supposed to be plus C? No, 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 no. Just kidding. <laughs> and there is an equation how to connect initial uh, shape of wave function with C coefficients. Just overlapping. Okay. Right? Initial state is uh, <laughs> later. Okay. And um, some of you may recognize this slide because I borrowed it from an uh, instructor who taught uh, this course at this university six, five years ago. It, it's a summary of the same thing. Right? Time independent Schrodinger equation, set of uh, psi functions and energies, time d dependent and uh, expansion. But we already got what, what is new here is explicit shape of kinetic energy and, uh, and potential energy, which probably we, we, need to, we need to cover. We are already here. So I will write on, on, on the side. You, sh you should forgive me for my... Uh, Issues with the notation, but is it, isn't it saying it's a function of x and t? So you're saying it's time independent, but yet it's function of time, the phi. On that. This is time dependent. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, but then it, the line literally says the time independent equation. <laughs> you look to go above. This further no, up. the t top, the circled one, right? Yeah, the, right there. Yeah, time independent equation, and it's saying phi is a function of x and time. 
So I'm just curious. This is wrong. Cat. Thank you. The catch. The good eye. I was like, what? Excellent. We will have the, the, the slides will become perfect with years. Thank you. Uh, so let's uh, recall who we are, what we are doing, what, what are our goals, and how close we are to, to reaching them. So we need to establish structure to property relations. We have an idea how to quantify molecules as a set of Cartesian coordinates. And we know that uh, electrons are distributed in space, and we need uh, to for solve Schrodinger equation for electrons. So we do need explicit expression for Hamiltonian operator. We do need to write down what H is, right? So how do we write what H is? H is kinetic energy plus potential energy. For kinetic energy, we need momentum of each particle in the system. For potential energy, we need position of each particle in the system. By some reason, in each class, upper right uh, side of touch screen is not writable. So kinetic will be P squared over 2M, right? You, you recognize this equation, which is the same as M V squared O. M V squared over 2. So this equation doesn't, bother, doesn't uh, surprise you, right? Mass times velocity squared over 2. And since... Uh, M times V is P. We can go from uh, from this notation to this one equivalently. And potential needs a little refresher of electrostatic and Coulomb's law. Who has never heard about Coulomb's law? Who is able to go to the blackboard and write down Coulomb's law? Okay, at least one. A anyone else? Ohm's law, no? No, no, not Ohm's. Not Ohm's. Coulomb's. 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 <laughs> not, not comfortable. Who, who, is, who can do it with a little help? Or has a general idea what is Coulomb's law? Do not hesitate. It's, uh, your grades will be based on the research, not on, on the knowledge. I haven't seen that equation in like five years. But uh, what, what, it, what, what does it connect? I have no idea. I just know of it. Any, any ideas? Because if, if I declare it, you will forget it quickly. If we discuss, it will be better in our memories. Well, it has to do with part of what you just showed us up there, right? So yes, yes. <laughs> Everything is connected. Okay. So, um, why electrons do not depart from nuclei? The charge. The charge. We, which force brings them together? The charge of electrons. So electrostatic force that brings negative uh, opposite charges together in the smart colloquial language is Coulomb's law. Okay? So if, you, if someone will torture you on your thesis defense, you can <laughs> at least say this one. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully you can provide something better. So um, if you do have charge one, charge 2 and distance unit like r1 minus r2 with some constant so it will be v as oh, function of r1 and r2 
church and distance between them. If they're cl really close to each other, if the positions of two charges, of two point charges are very near each other, then they will interact uh, like crazy. If uh, they are far away from each other, if this R1 minus R2 is infinity, then Coulomb's law is uh, zero, gives you zero. Okay? That's absolute, R1 minus R2? Yes, yes, okay. ab absolute. So if there are two charges of the same sign, it will be repulsion. Positive energy means things are repellent. If energy is negative, it's a stabilizer system, it's attractive. So it's important that charges Q1, Q2 will be opposite. So multiplication of charges, subtraction of distances. Now you have solid background <laughs> in uh, classical scientific education. Good. So, and these two things, kinetic and potential energy, enter into Hamiltonian. That we need to, uh, I hope that we'll have enough steam to complete it today. Will you also uh, share the notes? I already did. Oh, okay. No, 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 I meant the completed notes. Or just the video lectures, which... I, I don't mind sharing them. Okay, that'd be great. Yep. Um, do whatever is comfortable for you, but uh, I, I recommend... Well, maybe if I would be taking this course very seriously, I would, like, as a student, I would print notes before and fill them. Huh. But I'm not sure if, if you plan to do so, therefore I'm not printing it for, for, for everyone. No, 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 I mean, like, yeah. You can relax and wait until notes are coming, but at the, it's my personal experience from undergrad time. When I am writing something, it uh, scratches through the memory and memorizes much better than. Okay, sounds good. Um, what did you say about the equation up there? This one? Yeah. Uh, this is kinetic, this is potential. Okay, so that's okay. But uh, here it doesn't specify what is V. It tells a little bit more what is kinetic, it's second derivative or, or position, but I'll go over it a little bit very soon. Okay. So going back to my favorite figure. So for kinetic energy, it will be really easy. It will be a lot of very boring writing. And it is one of the reasons why it is much more pleasant to be computational scientists rather than theoretical. You don't need to write much. And if you do a theory, you derive equations through several pages. So for kinetic energy, it will be simple. But for potential, we need to carefully take into account all pairwise interactions. So by now, you do know that Coulomb's law involves two point charges. And we do have four. Right? So you need to consider these four charges as, as pairs. How many pairs? Um, One, two, two three, three, four, four five, five, six. Right? And each of them will give contribution to potential energy. And you have noted that uh, there is an absolute value of the distance. Right? So we need six, six absolute values, six distances. Let's carefully draw them here. So. This one will be R capital 1 minus R capital 2. This one will be R lowercase 1 minus R lowercase 2. Uh, I was wrong. It should go, arrow should go another one way. It is a vector. 
I did, didn't put absolute yet. So this one will be R1 capital minus R1 lowercase. This one will be R2 uppercase minus R2 lowercase. Uh, it was backwards. Or you have like the first set you did backwards. You, you know, it's yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. But. Uh, I just have a problem that if I keep this uh, highlighting color, it will, not, it will be not visible. It will be a little thin. R1 capital minus R2 lowercase and R2 capital minus R1 lowercase. If you draw it yourself, maybe you will be, you will be more artistic and uh, more uh, comprehensive. So, these six distances are needed to formulate Hamiltonian. And we need Hamiltonian to find electronic coordinates to solve uh, uh, for coordinate fields. So, how many attractive parts are um, attractive terms will be here? Four. One, correct. How many repulsive terms? Same. Huh? Two. Yeah. Sure. One for, for oh, yeah. between two nuclei yeah. and one between two electrons. Okay. So, um, if I do want to write at least potential energy, I need to write down six times Coulomb's law, right? Six terms. And for, for electrons, just for the future, we have mass. Um, oh, I want to tell you a secret. Do you like conversion of units? Does anyone like conversion of units? Uh, what are atomic units? Raise hands if you heard about them. Raise hands if you have never heard about them. Uh, give sign if you are so-so. Okay, so Conversion of units is a way to torture young minds in uh, <laughs> school and, 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 and college. <laughs> True scientists do not bother themselves with, with this uh, stupid thing. There is a system of, of, of units where all constant, most of the constants are equal one, and one just uh, skip them. Right? So remember when we wrote Coulomb's law. We put this uh, coefficient, which in fact uh, in uh, SI unit uh, it is, it is uh, 1 over 4 pi dielectric constant of, of vacuum. If you're in atomic unit, you just skip it. Um, if you um, need to deal with mass of electron, you need to memorize how small it is. But if you're in atomic units, it is 1. Planck constant. It is like 6 times 10 minus 34th like joules times second, very ugly. If you're in atomic units, it's just one, right? So if you agree to, to do everything in atomic units, our life will be like a piece of cake. You do electron volts. We convert only from atomic units to electron volts or whatever nanometers what we need uh, in communicating our computed results with experiment. And it will, uh, make less strain on a hand while <laughs> repeating Coulomb's, writing Coulomb's law again and again. So, we can write that there is a charge of electron, but it will be, it will be 
actually one in position R1 or R2. Momentum we can call it P1, P, P2 vectors. And for nucleus we can call it as capital M charge. It will be well it will be different. So some, sometimes it, it can differ uh, from one position R1, R2 momentum P1, P2 just uh, using uppercase. And for uh, for, for uh, potential energy, we can carefully add together plus, and I'm, I'm working in atomic system of units, position of nuclei 1 minus position of nuclei 2, absolute value. Repulsive. Positive. Positive energy is bad. Means like hating each other. Plus. Uh, and I put here one instead of uh, charge of iron because uh, protons are so easy as they have charge one. Same as electrons. I intentionally selected this example. So plus one over R1 lowercase R2 lowercase. So it's again a term of hating. Two electrons hate each other and try to depart from each other. Two, repulsive. And then minus. Minus one over R capital one minus R lowercase one. So it's uh, attraction of electron to its own personal nuclei. Minus attraction of the same electron R1 to a foreign ion, right? Minus one over R capital two minus R lowercase two. Attraction to its personal host nuclei and minus one more term uh, R one minus R two. Like. Uh, I'm walking with a, with a dog, and dog, instead of coming to me, coming to another person. Okay. It's uh, attracting to uh, four inside. Four terms. So by now, we are so rich. We already have half of Hamiltonian. Uh, <laughs> you never thought that having so many terms uh, in Hamiltonian it means to be rich. So we do have six terms. Potential energy for Hamiltonian. Now we need to add kinetic energy and we will be done. So this potential is not one dimension. It is uh, how many dimensional? Oh, oh. oh uh. Oh. Twelve? Four more, right? Because one has three. Each, one yeah, yeah, each has three. So. Um, it's easy for us to, by human uh, abilities, to imagine one-dimensional potential or two-dimensional potential. But if you, even three-dimensional with color codes. But if it is 12-dimensional, it's a little uncomfortable. But with equations, it's fine. Right? So, moving in 12-dimensional potential. So, uh, I promised you that kinetic energy will be simple. I'm trying to rewrite this, um, redraw this equation each, each year, but it, it seems that my drawing skills becoming worse and worse. So, I think we are, we are already approaching the threshold of human abilities. We, we need to wrap up soon. So, probably when we will be done with kinetic energy, we will uh, leave a anything left for another minute. Oh. What, what is here on the top? Who likes this equation or who hates this equation? You can, you can show like... <laughs> or if you... If, oh, okay. <laughs> any, any other words? Would, you, would anyone be able to explain what is uh, this circled equation? 
the momentum operator. Hmm? So remember, we were talking about that uh, in classical mechanics, momentum is a variable with a single value. But in quantum theory, it is a differential operator that acts on the psi function. And this is very simple. It is the simplest uh, operator that is easy to memorize. You see, it is for one dimensional projection of momentum onto x dimension. It is d or dx, derivative, first derivative, and it's multiplied by minus imaginary unit and h bar. Right? What is Kinetic energy. It's the energy of the electron. Oh, right. And mathematically, it's p square over 2n. Right. So if one uh, plugs in this stuff into p square, p x square over, over 2m, one would get minus h bar square over 2m d2 d x squared, right? Because uh, we have kinetic energy is momentum squared. From first derivative, you get second derivative. So we just literally plot uh, that into for the momentum. Into kinetic energy, yes. Okay. And uh, for for now, we can skip this little translation from classical to quantum because it is uh, obvious. We will just we need nomenclature to count terms. So one more thing that doesn't have much science behind, but as a um, quantum accountants, we need to uh, have different rubrics for each stuff to have it organized. You already realized that there are many terms. Of course, we are going to run software. We are never going to derive equations for bread and butter. But just to get through, it would be reasonable to separate terms in the Hamiltonian and speak of them separately. You already noticed that there were three, like there were six terms, and they were broken onto three groups. Interact, uh, potential energy of interacting of nuclei to nuclei. Potential energy of interacting electron to an electron. And potential energy of interacting nuclei to electron. For hydrogen molecule, it was really quick and easy, right? But if you need benzene molecule, it will be a huge amount of, of, of terms. I'm not sure if you really want to write them down. But at least we can tell for sure there will be three types of terms. I can quickly write them here. Plus 1 over R1 minus R2. Plus 1 over R lowercase minus R2 lowercase. Minus 1 over R1 R1 minus R1 R2 minus 1 R2 R2 minus 1 over R2, R1. And how many, in the same way, we can uh, count terms for kinetic energy. So there will be kinetic energy of nucleus, N capital, and kinetic energy of electrons, E over case. How many terms for nuclear uh, kinetic energy? There are two nuclei, one term per each if we are in vector form, or three terms per each if we are writing components, which we are not going to do. So shorthand, P capital square vector 1 over 2M, mass of probe, plus P capital vector square 2 divided by 2 m. And for electrons it will be p lowercase 1 square 2 mass of electrons 
plus P two square over two M. So we um, at this time, if I would be sitting on the other side of the barricade, I could be scared away, thinking that, oh, oh if you are going to write such Hamiltonians each time, I don't like this course. <laughs> no, we are not going to. We are going to write some equations, but in our practical work, uh, we are not going to derive equations. It's just understanding what is implemented in the in the computer codes. I have a question. Yes, the please. screen is covering up the so it's one over big R two yes. over my yeah. R minus. Yeah. And then the next one's gonna be big R two over little R one? Yes. Okay, got it. Or minus R one. Okay. I need to memorize not to write in the lower left corner. <laughs> okay. So how many terms total? Four plus six. Ten terms in, in the Hamiltonian. Right? So you put big brackets, ten terms in there, acting on the unknown wave function. And you with an <coughs> independent vertical equation. If, um, if I'm lazy to repeat the same equation uh, four times, I can implement notation for summation. Right? If I want to uh, use this kinetic energy of nuclei with index i that runs from 1 to 2, kinetic energy of energy with momentum of electron with index lowercase i running from 1 to 2. And uh, here, there is no summation here for four times, so we have. I capital running from 1 to 2, I lowercase from 1 to 2, and here R uh, lowercase I lowercase minus R uppercase I uppercase, right? adding together all, all terms. And this is our Hamiltonian. Good? So I think this form is uh, something that uh, we can digest instead of writing this uh, explicit form. Just understanding the terms T and V, N and E for kinetic and uh, N, N, E, E and E. So how would we, how are we going to call this, this beast? Of course it is Hamiltonian. But it is not a Hamiltonian for one electron. It's not a Hamiltonian for one proton. It's a Hamiltonian for the whole molecule. So it is molecular Hamiltonian. So if we are putting the, uh, if we act with this unknown wave function onto, uh, with this molecular Hamiltonian onto unknown wave function, We are doing absolutely correct, but absolutely useless thing. It is general equation where both electrons and nuclei are considered at quantum level, right? And you know that nuclei have some quantum properties, but they are not so important. So we are making general, but too much, too too rigorous. So we will discuss this equation today, maybe uh, on Tuesday, but then. We will make anything we can to simplify it. Even for uh, H2 molecule, it is complicated, but for anything realistic, it is unsolvable um, and unpublishable if you do some research with it. But we, we need it as a background for, for all our theories. So, what? Uh, it's definitely ugly. Why? Because it depends on. Uh, Several R sub i positions of nucleus and several positions of electrons. So basically, it's like if you try to describe this system. Um, <laughs> so it's about 100 uh, ions times 3. It's, it will be 300 projections of, of uh, Cartesian coordinates 
for nucleus and silicon has about 20 electrons times uh, 100 times 3 and it will be just number of independent variables <laughs> so it's uh, just a mathematically abstract uh, abstract model but formally if maybe with advent of quantum computers one will be able to solve such equations for in small cases but uh, in this course we will try to find approximations and ways to simplify this molecular Schrodinger equation. And this molecular Schrodinger equation because it, it includes everything in, in the molecule. Uh, I'll cover the things later. I think it is enough. <laughs> You need to digest it. So, um, um, a little organizational note. Um, I'll, I'll chat personally with uh, Gage if uh, you vote to start uh, Thursday meeting, maybe 15 minutes later, or we can still plan on six, but arrive with delay. I can easily arrive. <laughs> or or uh, agree. You have time, about a week, to, to tell you the decision. And um, for use this we can either uh, keep this room but then we will be kicked out after one hour something like this which maybe you like that yeah <laughs> a little pressure or we can do tuesday meetings in the same room where the labs which also has recording facilities and and, and big screen so i mean different either one okay then i'll meditate during the weekend and i guess in our lab so we don't have to do if if you will do everything in, in the lab, then all three meetings will be in, in one. Yeah, that means nice. probably you can do even Thursday in the lab, and for Gage it will be quicker to go from model hall to PBB. Yeah, so uh, yeah. so four hundred that room four hundred and one thirty one thirty two four hundred is available only in mornings. Oh, on, okay. The on one evenings it. there are, it, it's over overbooked. Oh, okay. okay. But the the lab is available. Done. Yes. I'll stay here to answer any questions, but is, formal meeting is done. Everyone is welcome to meet. So, are you, are you gonna post like lecture and the slides that you've written on just now? Hmm? Like, you just have slides that you modified right now. You're gonna post sure. those? I will send it as an email to everyone to help it. Oh, I have a perfect. chat. And, and, I, and link to... Okay, perfect. I'm not sure if I... If I so I, I... Are you on Blackboard as well? Did, did you put them on Blackboard? I assume that I should be with them. Okay, because I... It's, it's above my... Interest. I am registered okay. for the class, so I am definitely... I should be in there. I was, I'll, I'll try to Blackboard. communicate in the... Oh, oh, okay, okay, perfect. I know. That's why I stay I slept in today. I'm like, I know today will be the